Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Nal Harmi and today I'm going to talk about five things I do as an integrative yoga therapist to deal with my SOS emotions. And we're going to do this through the five layers of the integrated yoga therapy framework, the physical, the energetic, mental and emotional, witness and bliss bodies. Let's get into it. Physical. All right, physical. When I get, and this is specifically, and for each of the aspects, I usually have a particular emotion that I have when I use this layer of the body. So for the physical, it's usually when I have to deal with anger that I get like, I try to get the anger out physically. And the way I do it is um, by doing a handstand actually. Um, I know in yoga, it's very popular for people to do handstands, but because in my yoga teacher training, when we learned about handstands, everyone was in such an egoic state that I checked out mentally. <laughs> and I actually do my handstands from a gymnastics point of view. So I like, I like get into it like a gymnast instead of a yogi, which is very different. And so when I get so angry that I can't really do anything about it, and I almost like am on the verge of a blackout, I literally physically have to turn my body upside down and literally use my arms to kind of take my lower body weight, which is actually really heavy because of my ass. And I have to hold it. And all of that takes so much energy that literally through the handstand, all of this anger kind of gets dissipated. And my flipping upside down, I kind of get up an upside down view, which is usually what I need when I'm getting super angry is I know that I'm looking at a situation in perspective that is not accurate and I need to flip it, literally. Second, boom, energy levels. When I get in a crisis SOS emotion, what I do, literally you'll see me do this. I'll literally prop, have to prop my hand on a table and I'll start doing Nadi Shodana, which is the alternate nostril breathing. Super simple, inhaling through your left, blocking the right nostril and then exhaling through your right, inhaling through your right, blocking it with your thumb and then exhaling through your left. That's one round. And you basically do this over and over again what you can do, what is normal, what I like to teach people to do is to actually visualize doing it, inhale, exhale. But what I'm so upset that literally I'm so frustrated that I need something physical to literally help me block this emotion. Whereas if you imagine inhaling through the left, exhaling through the right, it will literally, even though your hands are not blocked, you will inhale you will feel the sensation of the air going through your left nostril and out through your right and it's focused. But when you're frazzled and you're in your amygdala and you're not really thinking about things, your hand really helps. So that's actually usually how I get quick into uh, like a jam. I also do that when I have, whenever I have a headache to get like more oxygen balance between my left and my right brain. So that's something that I do like really quick. So third step, mind, mental and emotional layer. This is by far my number one go-to. And that's, I only do the physical and the emotional. Usually the physical, the physical handstand aspect, or I'll do jumping jacks. That's another one that I also do, just like to jump and to kind of get uh, that anger out. The physical one I do when I'm usually alone and I feel suddenly get this urge of anger. The second one, the energetic, is usually what I do in public, okay? When, when I'm like in, I'm literally needing chaos and I'm like, you know, like I'll start like getting into it. But by far the majority of the time I'm in my mental and emotional layer, which is actually reflecting on my things. And so I just recently started doing actually integrative yoga therapy with myself once a week. It's been 20 sessions so far. Actually, this Friday we'll make it like 20 sessions. And it's literally the happiest thing that it's made me. It literally came from an idea of one of my clients like asking me, oh, so you're an integrative yoga therapist. Have you ever done it before? And I'm like, no. And I got super jealous. And I was like, you know what? Who's the best yoga therapist that I know? And I'm like, me, I'm gonna do therapy on me. And I would normally uh, not say that everyone is capable of doing this. 
mostly because people are not capable of looking at themselves honestly, but I trust myself that I'm usually, that's not my problem. <laughs> so I can do that and look at myself very honestly and be like, all right, just play the role of the therapist and myself. And it has been phenomenal. So in addition, that is ongoing work that I do with myself. But when I'm in an SOS, one of the first things that actually came out from that individual um, therapy session with myself was that when I get in a helpless state, like a helplessness state where I'm like, I feel like I can't do anything. What is my game plan? The first thing was to set up a game plan with myself. And the game plan was actually, um, oh man, I wish I had it. But it was like, I had to actually change the time. But the first game plan was, num step one was actually hold my inner child and like hold them and just like kind of comfort them, calm the inner child down first. And then say a prayer and then it was to go talk to my therapist and the timing that i gave to it was like to talk to my inner child for like 10 minutes and i think to pray for like 15 minutes and then go talk to my therapist for like 15 minutes or something like that and then when i practiced it for a week i realized that actually uh i need to pray for like five minutes i don't really need to pray for that long and I realized that I actually need to talk to my inner child just a little bit. And I need to talk to my therapist for a, like a longer period of time because I'm able to calm the inner child like quickly. Prayer immediately calms me down faster. And I think I, I believe I needed to flip it, flip the roles. So first thing when it comes to your mental and emotional layer is go directly to your inner child that's suffering. What is that aspect? First of all, identify the emotion that you're feeling. I was feeling helpless. It's usually helplessness that will make me like, <sighs> I don't, I like, I don't know what to do. And then I'm like, chill, Nahal, you got like so many tools in your toolbox. Like, let's just calm down. But first I need to say prayers, calm myself down, connect to like a divine source. Like kind of like almost like making yourself receptive to a higher power because in that truly physically helpless state where you know your body's in the amygdala, that's where you need to just be like surrender to a higher power. And then once you've done that, go comfort your inner child, go see what it's like, what it needs. What do you need from me? Like what's happening? What, what, what do you believe is happening with this situation? They don't like me. They don't want to be my friends. I feel like I can't do anything about it. I'm feeling helpless. It's like, is it actually truly that you're help, helpless or do we just need a breather? And can we think of a game plan? And once we think of it and I'm like, and I tell her all the time, I love you unconditionally. And this is one thing that I've actually been telling myself that is like almost like, like a bot, like licking my wounds is to tell myself actively, honestly, that I love myself. Like literally to just say, I love you. I'm like, I live in an apartment like by myself. So I don't like, <laughs> I can go with days without like meeting anyone or seeing anyone. And I realized that actually, if I'm not in a relationship with someone that I actually don't hear the words, I love you a lot. And I'm like, mm, I want that. I'm going to give myself that. So that's one thing that I've realized that as soon as I tell my inner child that I love her, and that there's nothing that she could do to upset me and that my love for her is unconditional. That's like game plan. That's like, okay, I can breathe now. Things are cool. Then I'll go to my therapist and be like, all right, so what was that? Like, what? <laughs> like, let's kind of deal with that. There's also another video that I made about cleansing emotions. I probably talk about this video so often. I, I probably should film it again because it was taken before I understood anything about lighting. <laughs> That's a good one. I usually do that. When I'm like super anxious, I first, when I'm in a helpless state, I do that process that I just say. But if I'm like just feeling just like ugh, frustrated, I do the emo that, that video where it's like the cleansing emotional debris, which is like to, to identify, I feel whatever emotion because this. I feel anger because this person uh, cheated on me. Or like, I feel angry because this person was uh, really rude to me. Or I feel angry because they didn't keep their word. And I do that, I write it all, flush it out until I have nothing more to say. And then at the end, I say, dear God, I surrender all my anger, jealousy, disappointment, whatever it was, all the emotions that I talked about in there, 
this is in the video, go check that out if you want to go look at the exact process. And then, uh, please take it from me. Dear God, I surrender all these emotions to you. Please take it from me. And then you kind of just allow a higher power to kind of, God can't take anything away from you. Your creator cannot take anything away from you. The divine cannot take anything away from you that you do not open your pawns and to be like, okay, I'm ready. Take it, please. You know, okay, so that's it. So that was the physical, emo energetic, and emotional layers. Okay, now we're moving into the witness body, which is all about being the witness of something. That's where I go into meditation, where I'm visualizing something or I'm actually have the tools. And usually this is a state that I have to be in where I'm relatively calm. When I'm so like agitated and I'm like in that amygdala flight or fright like situation, witness layer is gone. Sometimes I can just observe myself in a situation. That's like the witness aspects that comes out that I'm just like watching myself freak out. And that is good later on, but it's almost like I have to allow for that chaos to unfold. I don't have the accessibility to calm myself down in that moment. It's just like watching myself. And then later when I reflect it, I reflect on it using the mental and emotional layer, then that's where I usually, through what I observed, I can go back and like look at it straight and be like, okay, cool. The bliss body, the final layer, the joy. Usually when I am have overworked myself or bored, uh, do, do I usually access the bliss body sort of layers, which is I write a list of things that bring me joy. And whenever I've worked so hard on myself, which I'm trying actually not to even get to that point where I'm like doing things that bring me joy on a regular basis to not even need to do that on a chaos, chaotic level, that when I'm in an SOS, I don't need to evoke one of those joy things. But things that are on my joy list are things like taking a walk, like going to a coffee shop, learning, it used to be learning a new language, I haven't done that in a while, playing the guitar, singing, um, uh, drinking coconut water, like doing some physical yoga, going to a class, being with other people, um, listening to my therapist, uh, recording with my therapist. Things like that are like things that like really bring me joy and that I will actually have a list ready because when you're in that SOS mode, you really can't access parts of your memory or uh, you're just straight up in like a monomaniacal thing. So you need something greater and some kind of touch point to kind of like take you out of it. So these are the five um, layers of health in the body where when I'm in an SOS situation, when I'm super angry, I do the physical, I go upside down. When I'm it's on the energetic level, I'm feeling like low in energy or I'm starting to hyperventilate or get some anxiety when I'm with other people, I usually do this. Then um, uh, the mental and emotional layer is by far the number one layer. And the reason why also for that is that it's the root of all diseases. It's the root of all your pain. So I like to go straight to the root, but these two are, I, I do depending on the situation. And then the witness layer is literally just to allow your chaos to kind of happen and just be the observer so that you see every detail of your chaotic reaction so that when you're calm and you can go and reflect on your mind or your soul or your emotions, then that's something that you can do to kind of like regulate yourself or like you have like actually the data because sometimes you can black out from like the chaos. <laughs> And then the bliss body. The bliss body is um, uh, the list of joy things that like kind of is like a guide. It's almost like a like a compass to be like, all right, go do this if you're feeling this chaotic to kind of like get you out of the funk. I remember um, uh, a person asked me, "It's like, so you're a therapist? Like, do you do you do you feel ang like do you get upset and do you get angry?" I'm like, "Girl, you have no idea." <laughs> I'm like, the only difference between me and you is that I will always have the reaction, but how quickly I get out of it might be just a tad bit quicker than you. That's the only difference. The difference is not of whether or not I get upset, whether or not I do that. It's just my process of doing that might be quicker, might be expedited, and I just might be able to come back quickly. I have this video also, um, 
titled How to Deal with All of Your Emotions. And I talk about a study of monks, of how people who, who are monks, um, they actually feel more pain than other people. Um, but the only difference is, again, is that they're able to like come back to center. So with yogis, the same practice kind of like exists. We do meditation, we do breath practices. So we're just able to come back to our normal range quicker than others, but still the same chaos happens with all of us. So these are the five ways I deal with my SOS emotions, whether it's anger, like frustration, um, just like congestion, angst, disappointment, um, uh, boredom. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like this video if you liked. Let me know in the comments below what is most helpful to you and which one you're going to try out um, and what are some things that you do actually like share it in the comments below. This would be a place that other people would also share would also be like, Oh, um, I do this. I find it helpful there. I might've not known that it was in this layer of the body that it was doing it. But like now I can, I actually place it and be like, Oh, that's the layer of health that I'm kind of like dealing with the body. I will leave some links down below, uh, in the comments section in the description below, um, if you want to learn more about integrative yoga therapy or how to work with me, you are welcome to book me on a private session. I have many more tools to send to you, but this is really just the SOS absolute version of like what I do. There's several other videos that I've also posted about like what are other tools that you, you can do. And I will link them all in the description below or in the card here. And I will see you in the next video. And do subscribe to our channel if you liked videos like this and share it with your friends if you found it helpful. That is always great. We are intensively trying to grow our YouTube channels over the past couple of months because we are embarking on a PhD research study soon and we need to have some funds to be able to pay for our education. So we would really appreciate any support that you have to give us. It would really mean a lot. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.